Hi, fellow humicorns. Okay, so it is February 25th, 2019 at 11.03 p.m. And I don't remember the last time I made a video. Maybe it was recently, maybe not. I don't know, and I don't care because I'm here right now. And I am going to talk about something that really bothers me and is just an issue for me um, as a transgender human being. So I do not experience dysphoria in my life. Well, first of all, let's back it the train. If you're not familiar with my videos, first of all, ignore this is it but let's pretend it's not there so let's ignore it okay um so if you're not familiar with my videos I identify as a gender fluid human being slash trans masculine you know that wasn't a dab that was literally like just like a slash um so yes uh yeah my identity is just like evenly split. I really don't give a shit, but I go by he, him pronouns. So that's my identity. Um, back to what I was saying. I don't experience dysphoria, uh, anymore because I had top surgery. So like, I'm good. I don't have my tater tots anymore. So like, I am like, I'm good. Um, but the only time that I experience dysphoria is when it comes time to hair cuts. Hair cuts are really fucking distressing. So I live in New York City. Big city. Okay. Barbershops, salons, all over the place. Um... Some are like extremely expensive. And then depending on what neighborhood you're in, uh, they might be like $15, you know, like, like that land. Um, I live in like a really expensive neighborhood. where Like literally right up the road, there's a salon and haircuts are $80. But then like down the road, there's a lot of Spanish speaking salons. Um, that like are $15 haircuts. So I go to those places because I'm like, can't afford you. Um, and then there's like a couple like barbershops around. So it's like an even mix of like, you can afford everything and anything you want. And then poor people. Oh my God. Hang on. Sorry. So I get really dysphoric because, so I relax my hair and I just, I like my hair to be straight because it's much more manageable than the curls that I have. Um, it's just easier to be able to do this than when I don't relax my hair. So I was on testosterone for, this is a really gripping video, just wait, I'm like talking in circles, but just wait, I'll just wait. I was on testosterone for two years and 10 months, and I've been off of T for, I want to say, I don't even know, a year, two years, who knows, a while, uh, two years, I don't fucking know. I stopped on April 25th, two thousand. 17. So you can do the math on that. I don't know if that's a year or two years because I don't want to think about it. Um, and I was on T and my voice was a little lower than it is now. My voice ever since I stopped T like started like going up a little bit, but it was never like super duper low to the point that I would pass. So it was always really stressful getting my hair cut because I lived in a neighborhood where there was only a barber shop. There wasn't a salon or anything. But at this time, I identified, <clears throat> excuse me, I identified solely as FTM. So I 
only identified as male. So I only wanted a male haircut. And like, for the record, like this hair is like considered long for me. This like, I just relaxed my hair tonight. So like, this isn't normally uh, how my hair is. This is just what's happening right now because I relaxed my hair like, I don't know, four hours ago. Um, but back then there was like a barbershop, like literally right at the end of my street. And I had so much anxiety about going in there because it was an African American neighborhood and barbershop. And I was terrified because here I am, this little trans guy who has this high voice, looks like a girl and wants to go in there and get this guy's haircut knowing that I like wouldn't fit in and I finally worked up the courage to go in there after who knows how long I actually have a video of this on my YouTube so if you want to like stalk and go way back I have a video called who knows barbershop extravaganza I think is actually what it's called so dramatic um but I went and it went well, but I do remember that the barber kept saying, oh God, I remember he kept saying like, I know how to do women's hair. Like I have sisters at home and I was just like, this is not what I want to hear, sir. But I will show you how short my hair used to be. We know this isn't going to work well because showing pictures on phones doesn't go well. But this is how short my hair used to be, right? Um, at one point, I had a buzz cut. Here's just another picture on that headshot day of how... I'm an actor, so these are headshots. So I have had... Like, that's like no hair. That's basically no hair. Um... And I don't know where I was living when I got that haircut. Who knows? Then, n then in 2017, this is how short my hair was. Um, that's how short it was just in my life. And I happened to be in a play. And that's why I'm dressed like that. Because it was for a character. Then, this is how my hair was this July. Oop, oop, oop. And another picture of me looking androgynous with eyeliner. Okay. So, like a month ago, I needed to get my hair cut because I let it grow out really curly. And again, I relaxed it and it was curly and I needed to get the chop. The bottom line is, is I called had anxiety, had dysphoria. I ended up calling a barber shop and asked them if they could cut my hair. I ended up getting shot down and the guy was like, no disrespect, ma'am, ma no disrespect, ma'am. But like, I think you would be better off going to a salon because I tried explaining to him that I needed a guy's haircut and he just dismissed me and told me to go to a salon. And that was extremely heartbreaking and hurtful and extremely invalidating of my male identity. Because, like, here's the tea. Are you going to tell me that there is not some hipster motherfucker that has gone into your barbershop that had hair either my length or even longer and went in there and said, hook me up, like, style up my hair? Like, that's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. So instead, I had to have my boyfriend, who fluently speaks Spanish, type out for me a message in Spanish so I could go down to the Spanish-speaking salon and say, like, hand her a message on my iPhone and say, um, I need a haircut. It showed her the, the picture of me being, like, emo. I need my hair this short. And I had to say, please do not cut my hair in a feminine style. I need it this short. I need the bangs to be longer. And that's what I need. And I, like, said, do not cut it in a female way. And that was just a really horrific, sad day. 
And the reason I'm making this video is because I'm in the same fucking situation where I had to relax my hair again tonight because when I did it, uh, whatever it was like a month, two months ago, it didn't get all of the curls out because I had let my hair grow out so much that it just didn't get everything done. And like I said, it's February 25th right now and I'm having my headshots done on um, March 17th. And the goal is, is I need headshots because um, I discussed this with my management and this is part of the reason why I wanted to relax my hair is I want headshots that will make me look masculine, androgynous, and then like full out femme, which will be accomplished with like a wig and makeup. So basically, I need to cut my hair in a way that I'm comfortable with of like lengthwise that will make me that will be like in a masculine cut. However, I don't know where to go to get this haircut because if I go to a salon, number one, I can't really afford it. I mean, I could maybe try to afford it, but like, I really can't. But if I go to a salon, the women aren't going to understand and chances are they're probably going to cut my hair into a pixie cut. And it's stressful and... Not dangerous. I don't think like a bitch is going to like slit my throat like fucking, you know, what's his face like Sweeney Todd or anything. If I tell her that like I'm trans and I need a guy's haircut, I don't think it's going to be dangerous. But you always run the risk of transphobia of me having to potentially go in and out myself and me have to say like, I'm transgender and I need a guy's haircut like going into a salon, especially in New York. Like a woman salon may not know how to cut a guy's haircut. So it runs the risk of getting a pixie cut, which is what I don't need. I need a guy's haircut. And I'm just going to say guy because you know that I mean this, but I'm sick of doing the symbol because what is a guy's and girl's haircut? Like, fuck that. Gender isn't real. You know what I mean? Fuck it. But y'all know what I mean. Um, but I'm not allowed at barbershops either because I'm too feminine and like, I'm just not allowed. I'm not allowed in those spaces and going to them, trying to go to them is terrifying, potentially dangerous and just too fucking stressful. So it's just really frustrating and invalidating to feel as though I can't go anywhere to get my hair cut and feel comfortable. <laughs> yeah, to feel comfortable to get my hair cut. Uh, Cause believe it or not, like if, like if you're cis and you're watching this or if you're trans and you're watching this, uh, how we style our hair is is part of our gender expression and gender expression is extremely gendered. The way we style our hair, our, the clothes that we wear, all of that is classified under genders. And when you are a transgender person and especially when you're gender fluid like me, it's like where the fuck do you go to feel comfortable and you would think in a place like New York and I will say I do know people I do know actually a barber there are certain places for trans folk to get their hair cut like there are places I'm not going to deny that and say that they don't exist but I just as a trans person it is extremely for me, dysphoria inducing to try and get a haircut because I just, the bottom line is, is I feel fucking invalidated. I feel like I can't do something simple that cis people can. It is extremely difficult. Like, why can't I just get a fucking haircut? Why can't I walk into a goddamn barber shop and say, yo, give me a haircut. Give me a haircut. Why, give me a haircut in general, 
But then, like, if I have to classify and say, give me a guy's haircut, why can't I do that? Why do I have to be met with, when I try to explain the situation, to be referred to a salon? It's just, it's just too much. It's just, it just takes a toll on you because it's like, it just sounds really minuscule and someone might be watching this video and be like, you're complaining about something really fucking stupid. But the way that we present ourselves to the outside world is important. We wear makeup. We pick the clothes that we like. We ha have our favorite shoes. We do things, we present ourselves to the external world and hair happens to be part of that. And like I said, being an actor, I'm paying for these headshots. They are 250 fucking dollars. I'm going to have these headshots for years. And being a gender fluid person, I'm going to also be wearing wigs. So I'm going to be snatched as fuck, bitch. So I'm going to be wearing my wigs and looking all feminine as shit but I also need to be androgynous and I also need to be masculine. Add on top of this that I just got cast in a role as a cisgender male. So it's just, I had a breakdown earlier to my boyfriend. I probably talked for 20 minutes, which is almost as long as this video is, but I cried. I cried the whole time. Um, just about how frustrating it is and, um, it just really sucks. It sucks. I think what sucks is that this is something that I, as well as other trans people have to think about, but I won't speak for anyone else. I will just say me, but I'm not playing the victim card. I'm just saying it sucks that this is something that I have to think about because it's really fucking stupid. Why can't I just walk in somewhere and say, give me a haircut? Why do I have to specify what gender it is? If I want really short fucking hair and I want to buzz it all off. Cool. But like. Doesn't work that way. So I just wanted to make a video not only to vent but also just to bring light to an issue that this is something that trans people have to encounter. Trans um, feminine women grow out their hair. That's a big step for female identifying people, that their step is to grow out their hair, whereas perhaps trans masculine people their big step might be to chop off their hair. Hair plays a very important part in gender identity. And it's just really frustrating when you feel like you can't get the care or I guess rather receive the services that you need in order to fit your gender identity when it doesn't um, align with the way that you look on the outside, like in my case. So I'm going to stop talking. If you watch this whole video, you're a saint. I know the beginning was a goddamn mess, but I got to my point eventually. Get yourself a cookie because you're fucking amazing. Thank you for watching this whole video. And uh, I don't know, if anything, I hope you got some insight into just another person's perspective and how the world works, different opinions and all that good shit. But besides that, I hope you have an amazing day and life is good on your end. All right. Bye, guys.